Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we watch hundreds of hands from poker vloggers across YouTube and bring you 10 of the best. In this week's episode, we're at the horse races. There is a table full of poker vloggers and hands that you normally only see on the internet. Let's make a start. At number 10 this week, and Poker Face Ash is out of Arizona and playing in a 1-3 game at the Lodge in Austin, Texas. And this is a good lesson in always remembering to bet for value. Just a few hands later, we find ourselves under the gun with Jack-9 of spades. Under the gun, we should be raising about 10% of hands, and even though Jack-9 suited is at the bottom of that range, it's important to have hands in our range other than just nutted hands. That way, on any board texture, we can have coverage and we can't be capped. For example, if the board came out 5, 6, 7, and we only raised aces or kings or ace-king preflop, we become very predictable and our opponent will know that we can't possibly have a nutted hand on that board. But if we retain hands like 8, 9 suited, 7-8 suited in that range, then we're much harder to play against. So I raised to 15 and only a player in middle position calls, so we're going heads up to a flop of 9 of hearts, 4 of diamonds, deuce of spades. We flop ourselves top pair here, and so we're going to continue betting, and I put out a bet of $15. He makes the call, so we head to a turn card, which is a great card for us. It's an offsuit jack. We now have top two pair, and so I'm going to continue firing, and I make it $35. He makes the call again, which now I'm very curious what his range is here. He seems like a very competent player, so I'm not sure if he would float over over cards here, maybe hands like king queen, but he makes the call, so we're going to a river card, which is pretty much a blank. It's an offsuit six. This is where I'm gonna tell you, do not do what I did here, and I made a very, very costly mistake, and I, for some reason, decided to check. In the moment, I felt like I was trying to be trappy, but in actuality, when you have value at lower stakes games, just bet your hand, because players are way more likely to make calling mistakes than they are to put out bluffs. <sighs> so as played, I checked and he checked back and he showed jack 10 offsuit and I missed out on some value there on the river because I decided to try and make an exploitative play but in reality I should have just bet for value because I had top two pair on a very dry board even if he doesn't call that's okay but some of the time he is gonna find a call there with a lot of his hands and so I felt like I missed out on some value. Number nine this week and Mariano is playing at the Econolodge Casino down in Lake Elsinore, California. He's in a 5-10 cash game, and sometimes it's just too good to be true. In the next interesting one, I open pocket nines from early position to 50. There's a caller in late position, and then the straddler makes it 175. This guy had been playing really tight, so I assume he has aces or kings, maybe queens. Obviously, I make the call, and the player behind me calls as well. Three ways to a flop, which couldn't get much better. 988. Eight. Yeah. The Straddler continues with a bet of 250, and given that we're fairly deep, and I still think he has aces or kings, I choose to raise right away. I make it $750, and to my surprise, the player behind me calls the 750. So not only does it seem like we're up against an overpair from the Straddler, but also this guy behind me most likely flopped trip eights. This is what you call a dream spot. It gets back to the straddler now, and he thinks it over for a while before also calling. So still three of us going to a turn, which comes to six of diamonds. The straddler checks, and this time I decide to check myself. I'm hoping the player behind me bets with an eight, and then maybe the straddler will call again. Well, part one of the plan does work because player behind me bets 1100. Unfortunately, part two doesn't work because the straddler ends up finally folding, later claiming that he had pocket aces. Anyway, action's back on me, and I just announce all in for the player's remaining thousand or so, and not surprisingly, he calls right away. I turn it over, and we end up winning versus queen eight. Just an incredible flop, helping us take down another decent-sized pot. Number eight this week, and Lexo is at the Texas Card House in Dallas. He's playing in a 2-5 game, and I don't like running it twice, you know my feelings, but sometimes it really pays off to run it twice. There's a $10 straddle. I have 9-7 of hearts in middle position. I raise to $35. The button calls, small blind calls, and straddler calls. So we're four ways to a queen, 10, deuce, two heart board 
On this board, I have a nine high flush draw and the range advantage, so I continue for $80. The button calls and the small blind calls, the under the gun straddler makes to fold. Three ways to the six of spades on the turn card, now giving me a gut shot along with my flush draw. Nobody raised me on the flop, multi-way on this coordinated board, so I don't think my opponents will have anything better than just one pair here. So I think I can step on the gas and continue to bet big here, trying to put pressure on all their one pair hands and get them to fold hands like king high, ace high or jack high. I bet $325 and the button snap jams all in. One of the worst things for me to see. Super annoying here. I was semi bluffing and we get jammed on. The dealer counts out the chips and it's $650 more for me to call. We do have a strong hand, a straight draw and a flush draw. We're down about $3,500 in the session and we're not going to get it back by folding. So I decide to put in the call. Over $2,000 in the middle. We decide to run out the river two times. We are looking for a heart or an eight. The first river is a seven and the second river is an eight giving us a straight. My opponent shows king jack offsuit for king high, which means we have a pair on the top board and a straight on the second board we are going to be scooping this pot. Might be one of the crazier hands that I've played. I did not think I was going to be taking this one down. When I saw the eight on the river, I thought I was at least going to be chopping, but I will take it. We end up stacking this guy for over $1,000. Number seven this week, and Alex Duval is playing in a 2-5 game at Aria in Vegas. And Brad Owen is right. There really is no right way to play Jiggities. In the very first hand of the night, there is an early position limp for $5. The button calls, and the small blind raises to $25. I have ace-queen off in the big blind, and given the action, this is definitely going to be a 3-bet. I make it $90, and it folds back around to the small blind. Being 1k effective and my opponent covering, they decide to 4-bet to $250. In normal circumstances, this would just be a fold, but I had been at this table for a little while and I had been seeing this player get pretty out of line. My opponent will also know that I am 3-betting here lighter than normal because of the limps, which would of course encourage him to 4-bet lighter. We certainly can't call here, so it's either fold or jam. I choose the more aggressive route and I 5-bet jam all in for $1,000. All in. My opponent ends up calling, which is not what we wanted. I'm often just going to be dead here to queens plus, or in terrible shape against ace king. When the flop comes queen high, there is some hope, which quickly disappears as the turn is a king and the river is a three, which changes nothing. I reluctantly show my hand and end up being good. Really was not expecting to win this one. My opponent must have had pocket jacks. In at number six, and Wolfgang Poker is at the Hustler in Gardena, California. He's in a 2-3 game here, and hang on for just a second. Are we at the races? What's up, my beautiful aquatic friends? This is Fish here doing the special commentary for this glorious hand that starts off with Wolfgang looking down at Ace-3 suited on the button. There's one limper in middle position, and once it gets back to Wolfgang, he knows there's not going to be a lot of money in the pot, but he also knows he's on the button, and being on the button means he's in position, and being in position means that he has the power. Unlike Fish's parents, Wolfgang is not going to give up on this hand as he goes on and he makes it 10 bucks. Fish, aka me, is on the big blind, and it doesn't matter matter what two napkins I have, I could be looking down at two EBT cards and it didn't matter. Fish makes the call, the middle position player makes the call, and we're gonna go three ways to a flop of 7-6-7 seven, seven with two spades. It checks around and we're gonna go on and see a free ace of spades on the turn, bringing in the front door flush, and now Fish decides to wake the F up and fire off a bet of 20 bucks. Middle position player gets out of the way, and I'm gonna go on and just make the call since my kicker doesn't even play at this point, and we're gonna go heads up versus Fish to see another seven on the river. Fish assembles off a wager of 45 bucks to which I'm thinking whether it's a good idea to re-raise them because I've seen Fish's tail wagging this entire time. The only time I've ever seen Fish's tail wag this hard was when he was in line ordering tacos. Wolfgang goes on and decides to go with his gut instinct and only make the call which was just great for him because I never skip leg day as I go on and show quads. Absolutely insane. We're up against two sets of quads in this video already. Once again, it's going to a good guy, but what is our luck here at our meetup game? Nice hand fish. He takes down that $170 pot and we're stuck almost $700 on the session. Number five this week, and Ashley Sleaf is at the win in Vegas in a $1,600 No Limit Hold'em tournament. 
And I always feel like I'm on the receiving end of hands like this. And the very next hand, I find my spot. I pick up king, queen, under the gun one. I have 8,900, shove it all in there. The small blind makes the call. He's the guy that had the jacks earlier and he flips over pocket sevens and tells me that I owe him one, <laughs> which, you know, fair enough. We're looking to win this flip to get back in the mix. Lost the last one, so. Now I know more. <laughs> nice to win your flips. Number four, and our boy Ethan Rampage Poker is at the Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida in a 10 25 cash game. And exactly how many vloggers were at this table? One of the first hands right off the bat we get involved in, we have pocket fives on the cutoff playing seven handed. Our buddy Mariano opens it up to $75 on my right in the hijack. I decided to make the call with a good pair. In addition to that, our buddy Karan, who runs the Close to Broke channel in the Big Blind, calls as well. So just us three vloggers, let's see a flop here. The flop comes queen 8-8 eight, eight, rainbow with one club. Action checks to me here. It's surprising to see Mariano checks here. Certainly could go between a bet or check back, and I decided to just check this one back. The turn is now the eight of clubs. So now improved to a full house, Mariano starts with a bet of $75 now, and onto me, got a full house. As played here, folding would be a sin, so I'm in here, and Karan folds. We're off to a river, which is a seven, pretty much inconsequential as played. And now Mariano decides to bet again, and he sizes up to $300. Initially here, I certainly just want to fold. He's a strong player who certainly can have a lot of value and check strong hands on the flop. But the more I think about it, there are definitely a lot of bluffs that he'd play this way. Hands that surround a queen or even a turn flush draw like king jack, king queen, even ace jack might play this way. So anyways, what I'm trying to say is that folding is certainly boring. I make the call with pocket fives and a full house. He flips over king jack off suits and fives will take it down. Happy to make the right decision here at this point. And it's nice to start off this cash session with chips being pushed my way. Top three for week nine. And at number three, Wolfgang Poker is playing in the Rockford Charitable Games in Chicago, Illinois in a one two cash game. And I don't know about you, but is anyone folding aces in this situation? Wrapping up the session here, we got one more pocket pair to report on. We look down at the pocket nines, the Nueves, and I raise it up to $12. Small blind now re-raises us up to $35, and that's going to bring in the big blind. Of course, I'm not going anywhere, and I don't think a re-raise makes any sense here with my exact hand. So I find a call, and we're off three ways to a flop, which comes king, seven, deuce, rainbow. Obviously, having second pair on this board is not ideal, but it's also not the worst situation. Small blind bets out for $40, and when the big blind gets sticky and puts in the call, I think this is a great spot to put in the call as well. Small blind could just be representing a king and doesn't necessarily have to have it. A nine could peel off on the turn, which would be pretty sneaky, and if you did have a hand like ace king or king queen, we're gonna get the maximum. Additionally, we could just have the best hand here, so I put in $40, and we're off still three ways to the turn. 225 out there, and the turn is not ideal that comes the queen of hearts if he didn't connect with the king on the flop this queen is going to hit his range pretty hard so when he bets out for 80 dollars and the big blind puts in the call as well sad to say i'm done with the hand the nueves are obviously no good here i muck my cards but let's play out the rest of the hand to see what happens because it's definitely interesting the three of hearts peels off on the river small blind rips it all in for 250 and the big blind goes into the tank but then mucks face up pocket aces on that board i'm never folding in that situation and uh, one of the reasons why you probably shouldn't be folding pocket aces is because the small blind turns over the exact same hand. Pocket aces versus pocket aces. He got him off the chop there, and he's going to get rewarded with that nearly $400 pot. Number two this week, and Lexo is back at the Texas card house in Dallas. He's in a 5-5 cash game, and oh no, sometimes it's just so painful. Next hand, I'm going to blur out my opponent's hand so that you can sweat the action with me. I make it $50 with queen 10 over a limp. The button calls, limper calls. We flop top pair. I continue for $125. The button calls, limper folds. The turn is the queen of spades, giving me top two pair. 
finally, after a couple hours of basically nothing, we make top two pair make a pretty big hand here. I decide to bet $425, a pot size bet. I want to be betting this big with all my value hands and some of my big draws like King Jack, Ace King of Diamonds, Ace Jack of Diamonds. My opponent on the button decides not to call, but put in a raise. He raises it up here to $1,000. So immediately, I don't feel the best about this situation. The reason why is that the button player really has not been playing many hands. He's been playing pretty passive all night. I haven't seen him bluff once. I haven't seen him really get out of line. A couple times he flopped the nuts and bet. So now I feel like I could be getting coolered against fours or fives. Maybe he has a hand like king, queen of diamonds, ace, king of diamonds, queen, jack of diamonds. But would he really raise that hand? I feel like he would just call. One important thing to note here is the button only has $1,200 left. Not too much money to bluff me with on the river if he is bluffing here, which means he's probably leaning more towards value hands. However, we have top two pair. There's no way I'm going to be folding. The question is, should I just rip it all in or should I just make the call? In real time, I felt like a call was the best play, so I put in the chips and we're going to the river in a pretty sizable pot here. With top two pair, we see the seven of diamonds, which is not the best card. If he was bluffing with a flush draw, he got there. I check and he instantly jams all in. Ah, oh, just another nasty spot, just over and over and over again. We do have a great hand, however, the way he's played his hand, I feel like top two pair is probably not ever good here. I go into the tank for a while, start thinking over the hand, trying to run it back in my brain to try to figure out what I want to do. He raised on the turn, which is pretty strong, facing a pot size bet from me. If he did have one of those hands like ace queen or king queen, I'm pretty sure he would check that back on the river. I don't think he would ever be going all in with just a single pair on this river. I just cannot make up my mind here. Keep going back and forth whether I want to call or fold. I don't really see any bluffs in his range here once the diamond gets there on the river. We're losing to a set of fours, a set of fives, losing to eight, six for a straight. Any flush that he might have raised on the turn and queen X of diamonds. While I'm thinking over my decision, I want you guys to pause the video. Go down into the comments and tell me what you would do. Before you see the results, I want you to pretend like you're in the situation with me. Would you call here with top two pair or would you make the hero fold? After tanking for over two minutes, I let this one go and the button shows the queen of diamonds and he has the king of spades for just top pair. I'm not sure if he was bluffing here or value betting. I have no idea what the hell just happened in this hand. And at number one for the third time this week, Wolfgang Poker is at the Hustler in Gardena, California. And to me, this hand just feels like a hand you'd play online. We then look down at Jack, 8 of clubs from the cutoff, few limps over to me, and I raise it up to $15. Obviously, you can see some of the beers are going to my head here. We're opening Jack, 8 of clubs, but it's my meetup game, and we're trying to have some fun. We end up getting two callers. We're off to a pretty favorable flop when it comes a 7 4 with two clubs. Not only are we going to have some range advantage on this board, but we do have a pretty strong hand if a club can peel off on the turn or river. I bet out for $15, and both players put in the call. And we're off to the turn, which is the 3 of clubs. Bang! We turn the flush. Bang! Betting out for $50 seems like the move. I want to get value against any other ace. Maybe a king or queen of clubs might now pay us off for another street of value. The big blind puts in the call and the middle position player does as well. Not really sure what they have in the hand, but we're still three ways to the river, which is a pretty bad card. It comes the deuce of clubs. Now a queen or king of clubs has a speed and the five of clubs has a straight flush. The big blind now rips it all in for $180. The middle position puts in the call call and the action's over to me. Am I ever good here with my jack high flush? I just don't think so when it goes all in and a call for middle position. One of them has to have a queen or king of clubs and one of them might have the coveted five of clubs for the nuts. So I muck my cards face up. Middle position shows the king of clubs and what does the big blind show? Pocket fives with the five of clubs. He has a straight flush versus the king of clubs. What a gnarly hand here. $605 going his way. We're stuck 780 on the session, but we are seeing some absolutely insane hands here at the meetup game. Yes, indeed, folks. These hands do happen when you're playing live too. Ugh. 
Well, that's it for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us know what you think in the comments. And as always, if you've seen a hand that you think should make 10 of the best, let us know. Put a link in the comments and we'll see if we can feature it in a future episode. Until next week, thanks for watching. Good luck of the felt.